The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention The Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios. Take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Wagner Show. It's time to give a shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Wagner Show, international award-winning author, Mian Mosin Zia. If you love fast-paced mysteries, then you'll love Missing by Mian Mosin Zia. Available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast-paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries with two strangers and one target where truth is an illusion and those you love will be the first to go missing. It's available Available in paperback and ebook on Amazon. Missing by Mia Mosin Zia has garnered great reviews and is even loved by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forbes Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today. Order Missing by Mia Mosin Zia. Now available at Amazon. It's now time for the Mike Wagner Show, powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, YouTube, iTunes, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Mike brings you great guests and interesting people from all across the globe. So sit back, relax, and enjoy another great episode of the Mike Wagner Show. Hey everybody, it's Mike from the Mike Widener Show. Powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look at a professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic Web Studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention the Mike Widener Show. Get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, international warring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing by Mia Molson Zia has garnered great reviews and evil love and endorsed by Howard celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forge Riley, and many others. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. Also, the Mike Widener Show can be heard on the Mike Show.com. You can check our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the Mike Widener Show. You can download and listen on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, and Apple. Coming soon upon Bean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn. Heard worldwide on Geo7, Radio Public, Himalaya, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. And follow the Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And for some great gift ideas, go to Amazon.com and check out the Mike Widener Show podcast. Coming soon to the MikeWidenerShow.com. Get t-shirts, pop sockets, hoodies, throw pillows, tote bags, and more. Makes great gift ideas, especially for any occasion. And also check out the Me and Motion Zia store on Amazon. You can check out all his great books, including Missing, Once, Wrinkles, and T-shirts, hoodies, and more. Go to Amazon.com and check out the Me and Motion Zia store. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show. Also, um, well, 30 podcast platforms and support the Mike Wagner show at the Mike Wagner show.com. Click on donate. Also give generously on anchor FM slash support and PayPal. Make sure you do so today. We're here with a terrific gentleman who's not just an actor, also a writer, a director, and he's the founder of a wonderful movie studio that's um, based in Orlando, Florida, and he's award-winning. So we'll talk more about that. And uh, he uh, he's from Cincinnati, moved to Milan, Italy, and now he's in Orlando and uh, attended um, University of Central Florida. He's got a great story about that. And he's also won numerous awards for best script, best action, best original screenplay at various fests in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Chicago, and more. And we'll be talking about his brand new movie, The Local. He's also had some ones that got some great recognition. Live, ladies and gentlemen, from the Plus Studios in beautiful downtown Orlando, the very multi-talented and award-winning and the founder of Movie Nights, Dalton Burdett. Dalton, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Thanks for joining us today. 
Thank you so much for having me. What a what a pleasant introduction. That was very kind of you. Well, that, well, it's great to have you on board too. And I mean, with all the accolades that you've had so far, it's like it's worthy of that type of introduction. I mean, I I was um, watching one of your movies and I thought, oh, that's amazing. So it makes you want to go to Hollywood for all this too. But then again, Hollywood could come to Orlando. Who knows? So. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it would certainly make, you know, gas money a lot easier if they went ahead and just came here. So, oh, there's no help. question. There's no question. Before we talk about your career, there's a thing I read that, um, that, uh, what was it, uh, Universal Studios or was it NBC Universal? They're talking about coming to, uh, Albuquerque to, um, uh, establish some, uh, studio space out there. They're, uh, leaving Los Angeles. And I think there's going to be a trend that a lot of these, uh, film companies will be leaving California once and for all. So, you know, that's kind of starting a trend. Yeah, yeah, no, uh, I've heard that Albuquerque's got some really good tax incentives out there, and that's the magic word that a lot of uh, producers and filmmakers like to hear. Hey, just ask uh, Steven Spielberg. He, uh, or, yeah, oh, uh, who is it? Um, not, not, not Spielberg, but I'm trying to think. Um, George Lucas from Star Wars. He bought up like half the state of Montana just for his uh, Star Wars uh, projects. Bought the half the state of Montana. <laughs> Very little taxes. I mean, he starts something pretty good. So, <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And of course, you know, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about your amazing career, Dalton, and you're the founder of Movie Nights and uh, also your award-winning actor. And uh, you came from Cincinnati, moved to uh, Milan, Indiana, in Orlando. You attended University of Central Florida. You also won numerous awards uh, like Best Grip, Best uh, Action, and um, Best Original Screenplay at various fests in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Chicago. And you also had some uh, previous works like um, No More Safe Haven, The Long Hard Day, Contrition, and also a brand new movie out called The Local. We'll talk about that. And before we get into all that, Dalton, tell us how I first got started. Well, uh, first getting started, I, uh, when I was, I've loved movies ever since I was a kid, you know, I used to watch them with my, my mamaw. She used to, you know, take me into the room and we'd watch like these old fifties B movies that she used to watch when she was a kid. Oh yeah. Fifties movie. Oh my gosh. That's yeah. Like, oh yeah. Boy, that's we, like a throwback. What are they like, uh, they come out like at midnight one or two in the morning or something. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Yeah. They, uh, the sci the sci-fi channel for a while would play like those old fifties movies and she would always, you know, watch them with me. And uh, so, you know, the, the world of movies kind of got open to me when I was really young, but the, the idea of potentially trying to get into that world and get behind the camera to start making them and starring in them didn't really hit me till probably around early high school. And, you know, at that point, it was just kind of, well, what, how, when, why, like there's no handbook on this thing. So you kind of just have to do some research and uh, just do some tests with your own projects. Like I started making home movies with some friends. I started, you know, uh, taking classes. Like uh, my school had like a morning show class. So I was like, oh, that's something camera. Well, let's do that. So, you know, just kind of did what I could there. And it wasn't until I got to college, excuse me, at UCF, where I met um, the people I'm still working with now with movie nights where they had uh, different skill sets, but were equally as passionate about, you know, wanting to do something like this. And fortunately, you know, when I, uh, I think No More Safe Haven was my first official film, and we shot that going into my final year in college. So it was right around oh, wow. there where we started. Mm -hmm. and, and what was that one precise moment that simply influenced you into what you're doing for the rest of your career? Besides watching the movies, getting into uh, college and uh, high school and everything, what was that one precise moment that simply said, this is what I'm going to do for the rest of my life? Honestly, it was, it was probably... Uh, when I was signing up for college classes, because like, you know, everyone knows this, the struggle that an 18 year old goes through. It's like, here, make this decision that's going to potentially affect the next 10, 20 years of your life. And I was sitting there looking at all the options because, you know, like I had decent grades in school. It's not like this is the only thing I could have gone into. And I kind of just looked down and I was like, if I do anything else, I'm going to be miserable. Mm -hmm. So right there. And then I was like, this is the moment I'm deciding and just signed up for, you know, the film classes. And here we are at, at UCF. And, uh, and what was the reason for choosing a UCF over other schools? Uh, well, I looked at a couple schools. Um, I looked at full sail university for a little bit. They're also in Orlando. Uh, mm -hmm. my only trepidation with them is while they have a lot of equipment, a lot of hands-on learning, um, at the time, and I don't know if it is still or not, but at the time it wasn't an accredited school. Mm, so just yeah. just, in, just in case something happened and I had to drop out or something, I wanted to make sure that I had at least some credits going for me. 
And so um, I fell in love with the Orlando area. Um, you know, I moved to Florida when I was pre-teenager and I didn't really like where I was in Florida, but I always loved Orlando. And so I was like, well, right across the bay here, well, the bay, right, right up the road is uh, UCF. And I uh, went and took a little tour, got to see some of their film options. They had a BFA option that you could apply for, or if you just got into the school, you could do the BA option, which is what I did and um, just fell in love with it once I was there. Wow, that is amazing. And um, what, who are some of your favorite uh, actors and actresses and uh, your favorite movies growing up? Ooh, favorite actors and actresses. Uh, right now, I'd say like working today, uh, my favorite actresses, my favorite actress is probably Anya Taylor-Joy. She recently did a uh, Netflix miniseries called The Queen's Gambit, which was really, really good. And she's done a lot of, she was in a movie called Thoroughbreds a few years ago. That was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, one of my favorite actors working today, probably, hmm, probably Timothy Chalamet. I mean, I know that's kind of a, a, a young person answer to say, but he's just so good for how young he is. And my favorite actor of all time, though, and favorite actress of all time, on a favorite actor of all time, probably Jack Nicholson. Uh, favorite actress of all time, probably. Probably okay. This is going to be like a silly answer, but it's probably uh, Mary Tyler Moore. I've I've no problem with that. She's one of my favorites too. Is like watching Mary Tyler Moore show. It's like you instantly yeah. fell in love with her, even with those Whirlpool commercials, or was it Hot Point? She was like what. 16 or 17 at the time and pregnant. It's like, oh my goodness, how would you pull that off? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she was just a very multi-talented, multi-faceted multi actress. And every time I revisit some of her stuff or watch some of her stuff, it just encapsulates me right away. Huh. That's rather interesting too. And uh, you've been in Central Florida for quite some time. You grew up in Cincinnati. And tell us about your journey going from Cincinnati to Milan, Italy to uh, Orlando. Uh, well, uh, Milan, Italy would have been cool. I lived in uh, Milan, Indiana. It was. Oh, Milan. Uh, I'm sorry. Okay. No, no, no. It's okay. It was in Indiana. It was uh, basically when you're in the Cincinnati area, you're from one of three places. It, it's the tri state area of Indiana, Kentucky, and Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was born in Ohio, but I lived in Indiana just across the bridge. So I um, was born. We went over to Indiana. That's where I lived up until around middle school age. And I just lived up there on, you know, in the cornfields and the forest and then moved to Florida when I was about 11 or 12 and uh, started middle school down in Florida in Citrus County, Florida. And uh, I I'd been familiar with the Orlando area even before the move, because just because like once a year when I lived in Indiana, my family would take vacations to Disney World. Okay. And so, you know, my one kind of like how I viewed Florida was Orlando for a certain period of time until I moved into Citrus County, Florida, mm -hmm. which I have a love hate relationship with it. There are a lot of people there who really believe in, you know, doing good things for the community and want to help the community. And, you know, those people are the reason why uh, I, I like to visit sometimes and I like to go visit those people again. And I met a lot of really great friends there, you know, people I consider my brothers, I live there, but, you know, at the same time, you know, when you're young and you move, it can be very, almost traumatic in a way. And it was, it was hard to get used to. And I all, I just wanted to get to the Florida that I remembered, which was Orlando. So mm. really when choosing colleges, it was all right, it's going to be full sale UCF. I toyed with Stetson for a little bit, but that went away. And I just was like, if I'm going to stay in the state, it's going to be Orlando. Hmm. That's rather really interesting too. And you also formed um, movie nights as well too. We'll talk about that along with your awards and your other projects as well too, along with the local, but first listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike Widener show.com powered by Sonic web studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. Look in professional website without breaking your budget. Sonic web studios is the answer. Sonic Web Studios offers fast, affordable custom web designs that blow the competition away. Call today, 1-800-303-3960. That's 1-800-303-3960. Or email to support at sonicwebstudios.com. Mention to Mike Wagner's show, get 20% off your first project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Also, time to give official shout out to our official sponsor of the Mike Widener Show, International War Ring author Mia Molson Zia. If you love fast paced mysteries, you'll love Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. Missing is fast paced and intriguing with an unforgettable twist. It takes place in four countries, two strangers, and one target, where truth is an illusion and those you love be the first to go missing. It's available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. 
Missing by Mia Molson Zia's Garn. Great reviews and even loved and endorsed by Hollywood celebrities, including Joanna Cassidy, Forrest Riley, and Manales. So grab your copy today for Girls Missing by Mia Molson Zia, available on Amazon. And don't forget to check out the Mike Widener Show at the themikewidenershow.com and uh, for 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Google Play, Apple, Audible, and Amazon Music, and more. Take the Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device. Subscribe to the Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter. Check out the Mike Widener Show merchandise at themikewidenershow.com and also on Amazon as well, too. And don't forget to check out the Me and Molson Zia store on Amazon, like uh, Missing, Once, Wrinkles, and More, along with uh, T-shirts, hoodies, and uh, other apparel. And don't forget to support the Mike Widener Show at themikewidenershow.com with your generous donation. And don't forget to donate also to Anchor FM slash support and PayPal at the Mike Widener Show. Make sure you do so today. We're here with the founder of Movie Nights Production and award-winning actor Dalton Burdett here on the Mike Widener Show. And um, he's currently in Orlando right now. And um, tell us uh, about uh, Movie Nights and uh, how you guys got formed and uh, how you got started. Tell us about the company. Well, it started off as uh, we, we wanted to like make some little short films or make some skits for family members. And, uh, you know, we were all big fans of YouTube. We're like, oh, let's start a YouTube channel. And then we were all at UCF. The UCF mascot is the Knights. So we were like, oh, movie Knights, because we think we're clever. Ah, so we, that's clever. Yeah, no. <laughs> we, uh, so it started off as that. And then uh, I was really interested in movie podcasting, because that, that's something that has a fan base on the Internet. But it's, it's kind of a particular group who got, like, popular doing it. But there are tons of smaller channels who are kind of good but they just don't have the resources and it's just something it was a conversation that i loved being a part of i loved you know be, talking about you know what just came out of the hollywood reporter what just came out of variety oh what does that deal that multi-million dollar deal for this studio what does that mean how's that going to affect movies going forward like that's always fascinated me and i thought that movie nights can be more than just a company that produces films it can just be something all about film whether it's filmmaking film loving or film talking Mm -hmm. and, and of course so, uh, and of course one of them as well too no more safe haven got picked up for theatrical distribution in los angeles i mean that tells you something yeah yeah no and uh you know it's just something that we we all decided on we were god we were what 19 20 something when we came up with that and it's been a long time it's been like 2015 we started oh wow uh, yeah that just kind of hit me now but uh yeah and then uh 2017 we shot no more safe haven and it didn't get picked up for theatrical distribution until two years later, but oh, wow. um, in 2019. But that was a lot. That was a huge surprise and a lot of fun. Uh, a gentleman named Derek Quick, who had this company called Four Walled, um, was basically reaching out to a bunch of short films that he had seen and was trying to combine them into one like two hour package to show at a theater in Los Angeles. Cause he's like, I know how hard it is for short films to get off the ground. And, you know, I want them to be seen in the theatrical experience, but you know, you can't just rent out a theater for six minutes. You have like two hours. And if you're going to have two hours, you might as well put two hours of films worth together and do it. So it's this project that he set out to do. And I was very fortunate enough for him to want to include no more safe haven in that. And it was so fun. I got to go out to LA and buy a ticket to my own thing. It was super, super cool. Mm -hmm. And he also had contrition as well, too. I don't think we discussed that. And maybe just uh, tell us a bit about that before we uh, talk about the local. Yeah, no, contrition uh, was part of the Orlando Independent Filmmakers um, Edge Challenge, I believe it was called, because um, we uh, the movie nights had kind of tossed around wanting to do a horror film because I'd really wanted to do one. And uh, my friend Nicholas and I, he co-wrote the story with me. It, it started off as just like a, a home invasion story. And then we involved it to kind of have like a sci-fi twist to it. And we were able to write, shoot, and get that out for the Orlando Independent Filmmakers Edge Challenge, which we were fortunate enough to win Best Editing at. And uh, it was just a, f a fun little short film, a fun little horror short film. It was only like six minutes in length, but, you know, it was, and it had subject matter that was really important to me. And it, you know, I, I wanted to kind of explore the themes of guilt but mm. through a through a horror lens, a lot, a lot of the times guilt is seen through a dr dramatic lens or a drama lens, and that's not a bad thing. But something about guilt that a lot of people don't really, you know, I, at least that I don't see people con like conversing a lot about is how scary it is if you feel guilty about something and wanting to get receive catharsis or wanting to hide it. Like that whole thought process is very scary, and I wanted to kind of show the fear in that. It, it, it sounds pretty much like this is like a groundbreaking genre in a sense. I've never heard of it, but it sounds groundbreaking. 
Yeah, no, uh, it, it was just inspired by, you know, horror is, to me, horror is one of the best genres in film. You know, how, how many great filmmakers have come from horror? You know, you have Sam Raimi, who went on to do the Spider-Man movies. He started off with The Evil Dead, which was made for like 20 bucks. You have, <laughs> uh, you know, you have um, Spiel, Spielberg did Jaws. You know, you have... Um, um, the Richard Donner, who just recently passed away, he did The Omen in 1976. Oh, I remember The like, Omen. Yes, that was like, uh, what, spinoff or competition to The, to the Exorcist? Oh, yeah, and then he went on to make Superman. So, you know, just, you know, that's where that genre is just where creativity has no limits because you have to figure out how to not only tell a good story and have good characters, but scare people and in a space that's already subjective in nature what's also subjective is what i find scary might not be what you find scary so you have to kind of hit these different levels of okay we need to make sure that if we're going to scare that type of person that we also need to scare that type of person but we also have to make sure that it doesn't compromise the story that we're trying to tell and you know horror gets a bad rap and there are a ton of bad horror movies that are just all about gore and sex and all this stuff but then there are a handful even some that have come out um in recent years, like uh, Ari Aster's Hereditary that deal with these really deep themes that really kind of get you thinking after the movie ends. You know, maybe think of um, when you talk about horror, like, you know, how some of the uh, directors uh, first got started and then they went on the bigger and better things. And a lot of original ideas have come from horror as well, too. And the one I think of is like the Blair Witch Project, which Mm -hmm. was done completely on a hell of a movie camera. It's like, you know, all this bobbing going up and down and everything. But all of a sudden, it just opened up a brand new market where you can go ahead and um, make a movie on your uh, home camera. And nowadays, you can also make a movie on your um, iPhone, a smartphone or, uh, or your Android device. Yeah. And it's funny you bring up Blair Witch because the directors of that movie graduated from UCF. Really? Oh my yep. gosh, what a small mm-hmm. world. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, that is amazing. And of course, um, you also had um won some awards as well, too. And especially one of them, the local, we'll talk about that. But first, listen to the Mike Widener show at the Mike Widener show.com, powered by Soundweb Studios. Visit online at soundwebstudios.com for all your needs. Also brought to you by our official sponsor, the Mike Widener Show, International War Ring author, Mia Molson's You Have Missing, available on Amazon in paperback and ebook. We'll be back with the founder of Movie Night Productions and award winning actor, Dalton Burdett, after this time out. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Call 1 800 303 3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Hey everybody, my name is Forbes Riley and I'm an American actress and a TV host and I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real life relationship. It's just, it's well written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. It's Mike from The Mike Widener Show. The Mike Widener Show can be heard on over 30 podcast platforms, including Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Anchor FM, iTunes, Google Play, Amazon, Audible, Apple, and more. Coming soon to Podbean, Buzzsprout, Pandora, and TuneIn, where The Mike Widener Show interviews great guests, cool conversation, lots of laughs, coffee, and more. Take The Mike Widener Show with you on any mobile device, subscribe to The Mike Widener Show on the YouTube channel, and follow The Mike Widener Show on Instagram and Twitter today. Hey, hey, this is Ray Powers. And if there's one thing you can count on in these unpredictable times, it's that you're in good hands getting some great radio, courtesy of The Mike Wagner Show. We're back with the uh, founder of Movie Night and award-winning uh, 
actor, director Dalton Burdett here on the Mike Wagner show. And, um, you know, before we talk about the local, it has won um, best script at the L.A. Sun Film Fest and uh, award for merit for best action in Vegas. And um, also you could also um, tell us about more of the awards uh, it also picked up as well. Uh, yeah, it won the awards you just mentioned, and also just recently at the uh, NDX Film Fest, um, my the Michael Shank and Vittoria Resinetti, two of the actors in the film, won Best Supporting Actor and Best Supporting Actress, Nice, which is very exciting for them. They both gave excellent performances. They deserved it. And, uh, you know, I'm just thrilled that uh, the movie comes out very soon, and I'm just thrilled that, you know, some of the festivals are... Uh, embracing it and are enjoying it um it had a lot of hard work that was put into it and you know the big goal with that film is we want because when you watch it 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 kind of feels like a much longer story just told in 30 minutes and you know the goal with that film is to have someone watch it who's interested in investing in a feature film and so we can take this idea and make it into a feature-length movie that Mm -hmm. would be a lot of fun and also has an interesting storyline in it as well, too, that also also relates to what's happening in society where a new gang arrives in town and it's up to um a retired uh, hometown hero trying to save the day and, um you know, gets into conflict. And maybe just, um you know, tell us a bit about that and uh, what's the theme of the movie and what can people simply get out of the local? I think the the theme of the movie, the uh, what what the story I wanted to tell, like the story behind the story was the dangers of unrealistic expectations that you can put on somebody. Mm. And that's something that I uh, witnessed a lot when I was in school. You know, I witnessed, you know, brilliant kids, brilliant students who you didn't have to tell them that they do your homework. You didn't have to tell them, you know, make sure you're taking notes. They did all of it themselves. They were self-motivated. And then suddenly when people found out that they were good at that subject or good at that class, then suddenly a lot more interest became into that person. And then suddenly it was someone was checking on them every 10 minutes. Like, Hey, are you doing that thing that you were supposed to be good at? Cause I, I told people you were good at this. So you better keep up and be good at that. And then mm. what happens? And then what happens to those kids is suddenly they start to get worse. And it's not because they don't like what they're doing. They loved what they were doing, but they loved it without you getting up in their face and trying to take away the thing that they liked doing. And, um, it makes a whole lot more sense if you've seen if you've seen the movie, but that that's really what's kind of going on with the lead character at a much more you know dramatized level than that, and it's just um, him kind of succumbing to the expectations of this town that he lived in, and even though deep down he still has this desire and want to help people. Mm-hmm. And of course, I'm talking about coming to help as well, too, that um, I guess you kind of wonder is, you know, where's the police involved or is there any law enforcement or how effective is law enforcement when it comes if that hometown hero doesn't uh, is not able to come through? Yeah, uh, we uh, that was something that we talked about a couple of times in the movie. And one of the early versions of the script, there was more than one scene with police involved. And one of the reasons why we had to um, cut it out was one, just budget restrictions and, you know, getting permission to like have someone wear a police uniform out in public. It's very complicated to do. And not only that, but with um, because this movie, the local is based off of old Western movies Mm. where, um, you know, except with old Western movies, a hero strolls into town that he's not from, you know, hurts the bad guy. Everyone celebrates and then he leaves. And what we kind of wanted to sell what we, what we wanted to do with the local was what if the hero doesn't leave? What if he lives there? You know, what, what's, what are the consequences of saving the day and then having everyone look back at you and be like, well, when are you going to do it again? And, and that's so cutting out law enforcement and just addressing in the movie, like, you know, there's not that many cops in this area is to kind of hammer home the expectation that had been put on this character to kind of let, other characters in this world feel like it wasn't their responsibility. It was his. Mm -hmm. And do you think uh, social media or today's society is pretty much uh, embracing that idea or more like enforcing that message? Uh, Yes. And no, I I think that the good news is I I think that social media allows people to see other parts of the world that they never would have otherwise seen. And so you're seeing a lot of people decide upon themselves that they want to make a difference, that they want to do better, that they want to try out new things in this world that they've just been introduced to. And I think on that level, it's great. But on the opposite side of that, you then have people who see the other side of the world, but then decide for themselves, I'm perfectly comfortable with my life and where I'm at. 
And, you know, I don't think there should be any shame in that, but then you have other people who try to shame others into feeling that way. So I think it's both a good and bad thing. And, um, you know, I don't think the internet creates good or bad. I think it's just a catalyst for both. Mm-hmm. And, and do you think, um, w- would this encourage more people to, uh, get out and help or be cautious or is it ends up like pe- people will end up like staying away from helping? What I hope comes from this is if you feel a call to action, if you feel that you can make a difference doing something and you have a want and desire to do it, that you shouldn't let anything else stop you from doing so. But on the flip side, if you think that that's, if someone else is capable of that, but they don't have that passion, don't have that desire, it's not on you to force that upon somebody. Mm Mm-hmm. And of course, what's the overall message you're uh, trying to convey in the movie, The Local? I'd say the overall message is just, you know, um, like I said earlier, just the whole thing about expectations, you know, be, be careful what you expect out of somebody, what you tell somebody, you know, that because you never know how they're going to take what you say, because everyone's fighting a battle that you have no idea about, even your best friends. Mm-hmm. And you know, like, for example, you know, how many friends or people do you know that are relied on in the friend, in the friend group to achieve one thing every time? Like, or the, the friend who's always been the shoulder to cry on. And then sometimes that can be very overwhelming for that friend because, you know, where's their shoulder when they need some help? You know, it's, it's something that you see all the time. And I, I hope that the, the thing that gets taken away from this is you know, you just be careful with the expectations you put on people and you know when and where and how to help if you can. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very important message and a really good one as well, too, especially winning some awards. And uh, where can we find The Local at and where can we check out your other movies and your website? Uh, The Local is going to be coming out uh, this August on August 1st. You should be able to find it on Apple TV and the Google Play Store, Uh, maybe Amazon. Uh, It will be out on August 1st, though. Uh, The uh, distribution's a little rocky right now, but the plan right now is Apple TV and uh, Google Play. Um, For any more updates on that and where you can find us, you can find the Movie Nights YouTube channel at youtube.com slash C slash Movie Nights. And you can follow the Movie Nights social media on Facebook. We're just at Movie Nights. On Instagram, we're at Nights underscore movie. And on TikTok, we're at Movie Nights. We just started a TikTok. And um, in regards to the other films, uh, Contrition is currently streaming on Amazon Prime. And the other films you can find on the Movie Nights YouTube channel. That sounds fantastic. We're looking forward to it. Once again, we're with uh, founder of Movie Nights Productions and award-winning actor Dalton Burdett here on the Mike Widener Show in just a few more minutes. we love to have you back on. You've been absolutely amazing. And what can we expect from you in 2021 and beyond, Dalton? Uh, 2021, you can expect me trying to get as many people as possible to watch the local. And uh, <laughs> you, you, can, you can also expect um, more out of the YouTube channel. You know, we had to take a break from the the podcast and the other shows just to finish this movie because it was getting, you know, really difficult in Mm post-production and uh, all you can expect more updates on upcoming projects. I know in October uh, I'm producing a television pilot that a good friend of mine wrote. And in uh, early next year, probably early next year, we're going to be shooting another, another short that we hope to turn into a feature. So you'll hear more updates on that. Wow. Amazing. I'm looking forward to it as well. And uh, who do you consider biggest influence in your career? Biggest influence in my career? I would say there's two separate answers to this. Uh, There's the the person who I watch their movies and I just fall in love with the idea of movies. And then there's the person who I watch their movies, which made me go, oh, I can make movies. And, you know, the, the people who I just am infatuated with their work and just fall in love with the art form. You know, you have Steven Spielberg, you have uh, Christopher Nolan, Denis Villeneuve, um, Richard Donner, like I mentioned earlier, and, you know, people who make movies that make me just realize that I can do it, too, because if they could do it on this low budget level, then, then that means anyone can do it and I can do it. And those are filmmakers like Kevin Smith, like Sam Raimi, as I mentioned earlier, like Quentin Tarantino and his early work. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, I'd say those are a lot of the influences that I have. That is so amazing as well, too. And it looks like you're up there as well. And what's the best advice you can give to anybody at this point? Best advice I can give to anybody is, um, you know, if, if you love to do something, do it as much as you can, because, you know, you can't steer a car that's in park. 
Good you know, point. E- even even if you drive five miles an hour, as long as you're going forward, eventually you'll get to where you're going. Mm-hmm. Sounds like Christopher Columbus. Maybe slow, <laughs> but you'll get there. I love it. I gotta remember that. So. <laughs> <laughs> Once again, we're with the founder of Movie Night and uh, award-winning actor, and um, also the movie The Local and the Mike Widener Show. Dalton Burdett. Dalton, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely fantastic. Looking forward to having you again soon. Do us a favor, keep us up to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. Once again, tell us about your upcoming projects. What's your website? How do people contact you? Where can people purchase or check out your movies? Thank you. Thank you so much for, for having me. Oh, uh, and uh, don't forget uh, your website and where can people oh. check you out at? Uh, the website, like I said, is uh, youtube.com slash C slash movie nights. And people can uh, check us out on our social medias, Facebook at movie nights, Instagram at nights underscore movie, uh, TikTok at movie nights, as long as my, uh, along with my personal social media um, at Dalton Burdett on Instagram. That is amazing. We're looking forward to it. Once again, Dalton, a very big thank you for your time. You've been absolutely terrific. Looking forward to having you soon. Do us a favor. Keep yourself to date. Love you back in 2021 and beyond. Don't forget to keep in touch. You've been absolutely terrific. And we wish you all the best. You've got a great future ahead of you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Hey, everybody. My name is Forbes Riley, and I'm an American actress and a TV host. And I was delighted when I got my copy of Missing, which is Extraordinary Relation of Ordinary People based on a real-life relationship. It's just, it's well-written, it's amazing. You know, it talks about a man who has lost his wife and his daughter, and it's very well done. I'm gonna highly recommend that you go get your copy of Missing. It is a powerful, exciting read. Mr. Mian Moshe Zia, he is the author of Missing. And I wanna give a big shout out and a kiss all the way halfway around the world to my dear friend. Check him out at Mia's website. It's called www.miamoshenzea.com. Missing, available on Amazon. Again, I'm Forbes Riley, and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye. The Mike Wagner Show is powered by Sonic Web Studios. If you're looking to start or upgrade your online presence, visit www.sonicwebstudios.com for all of your online needs. Sonic Web Studios specializes in custom web design, app development, social networking, search engine optimization, domain registration, email marketing, online stores, and more. Since our birth, we have been designing and developing immaculate websites and providing web solutions which are a cut above the rest. As a leading web designing enterprise, we have a team of extremely talented web designers designers who are well focused and have the experience of working on multiple web developing platforms such as PHP, Magento, Custom WordPress and more. Sonic Web Studios has been helping businesses of all kinds whether big, small, established or startup impress their audiences with exemplary web solutions. We don't just create beautiful and functional websites, we give you a complete online solution with the main goal of enhancing your yearly revenues. We aim to give your business the online exposure and brand acknowledgement that will help you in achieving and increased conversions leading to profitable sales. Call 1-800-303-3960 or visit us online at www.sonicwebstudios.com to get started today. Mention the Mike Wagner Show and get 20% off your project. Sonic Web Studios, take your image to the next level. Thanks for listening to the Mike Wagner Show powered by Sonic Web Studios. Visit online at sonicwebstudios.com for all your needs. The Mike Wagner Show can be heard on Spreaker, Spotify, iHeartRadio, iTunes, YouTube, Anchor FM, Radio Public, and themikewagnershow.com. Please support our program with your donations at themikewagnershow.com. Join us again next time for another great episode of The Mike Wagner Show.